Thanks for joining us today on Peninsula Beat. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And Liz, there's so much going on in the community to talk about. So here we are to update everyone. A lot happening here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Right. Starting off with a big, big announcement, a whale of an announcement. A huge <laughs> announcement, Liz. <laughs> yes, that's right. The 34th annual Whale of a Day celebration that's right. is taking place April 14th. Mark your calendars, 10 to 4. That's right. We're going to be there. Of course we're going to be there. Now, you're not crazy. It was scheduled for this month, but of all the rain that we had, we had to move it around. Right, so, it got yes. postponed. Very rarely does that happen. Right. But it's in April. Spring is in the air. Hopefully there will be lots of whales migrating. And, of course, right. all happening at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. One thing to remember is if you're bringing your family, you come to City Hall right here. That's right. Park and there'll be for free, free shuttles all day long. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. event is free. It's really such a wonderful event for the community. What do you love about it? You know what? I love the fact that... Everybody can meet and greet and hang out. There's always great food, and the kettle corn is fantastic. So I you like have to have that. in the kid craft area. Always want to get that whale tail hat. But I like to hang out also to hear the, to you know, look for those whales, hear that bell hear ringing. Bell. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find out a lot about the whale migration and also spend a lot of time in the Interpretive Center. We do, and you know, the Point of Ascente Interpretive Center is such an amazing place to go. I don't care what day of the year it is, and I had a chance to go down there and talk to Emily Rodine, who tells us all about everything that PVIC has to offer, so let's check it out. All right. We first opened in 1984, and then we expanded and reopened in 2006, um, and that's when we did the addition to the museum. One of the exciting things coming up, which a lot of people might not know about yet, is we're actually getting two new exhibits at the end of this year. Um, the Lighthouse, which is located to, next to us, people are always curious, wanting to see the Lighthouse. By the way, it's open from 10 to 3 on the second Saturday of every month, so that's the only time you could really go inside the property and walk around. Um, but their lens, a third order Fresnel lens, is going to be installed in the exhibit space here, so we just anticipate it being a, you know, a wonderful addition to our premises, and we're just really excited. Um, the other thing we're changing out is our theater exhibit, and that's going to be a, talking about whaling and how it went on on the peninsula and also around the world, um, so that's also something we're looking forward to. We have about 60,000 visitors a year, um, and then the school tours, we would do about probably 45 to 50, and then we also do hikes in the area, and so that's about 45 hikes as well. So the docents are really making this place something special, and we're happy they're here to educate. Yeah, so the American Cetacean Society, they're the Los Angeles chapter, so from December to May, they're pretty much here from sunrise to almost sunset. They're volunteers, so they're volunteering their time to come out and just do the census for the gray whale migration. Um, and they're very informative, they're very friendly. So if you go up to them and have questions, you know, they'll, they'll tell you all about it and they'll tell you if they're seeing other whales out there too. So it's really fortunate that we have them here to kind of share that information. Mm -hmm. Right outside we actually have what we call the native plant gardens. So the California Native Plant Society works in conjunction with us. Um, we actually have a native plant garden coordinator. Her name is Megan Roy, and they do um, volunteer events once a month. It's on Sundays, and we have the schedule available here if you ever feel free to come out and help out. But it's amazing to see, since we've put that native plant garden coordinator in place, how much work she's done with the volunteers. I mean, it just looks gorgeous out there. So it just goes over the local flora and fauna. Um, some of the docents also know about that, so they can kind of give a tour and walk you through through, um, but it is beautiful. So there could be lots of exciting things that go on during the day. Um, this time of year it's really busy with a lot of school tours. Our goal really is to get um, the docents involved in educating different school groups that come through so they'll book a tour through us and the docents will lead them through. We have a third grade program, uh, fourth grade and sixth grade, but we open up to all school ages. Um, but other days, you know, we have holidays and lots of schools have it off and they like to come check us out so that's kind of just the basics of what you can do here at the museum. Yeah so one of the exciting things that we started a couple years ago was Little Fish Tales by the Sea. So that's on the third Thursday of every month from 10.30 to 11.30. It's geared for two to five year olds but what goes on is um, either the city staff are leading it or we have a conjunction with Palos Verdes Library District mm -hmm. and so it'll be like a story time with crafts, song, like rhythm, rhyme and kind of dancing and interacting with the kids so it's a lot of fun and it's educational for them too. Yeah, so Kids to Parks Day is going to be on May 19th and the event is from 10 to 12 here. So we'll have like sea themed crafts for kids, um, some games and fun for the family. Uh, we're talking about maybe hiding something in the museum that the kids can go find. Maybe it's a stuffed animal whale. So it's kind of interactive and gets them involved and kind of looking around and curious about the exhibits. 
Um, but that's, we are doing this a bit because the National Park Trust has established it, and so a lot of parks will be celebrating this um, across the U.S. Yeah, so our museum here, we like to highlight um, the natural and cultural history of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Um, so we have exhibits on the Tungva, which were the first inhabitants of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. We have an exhibit on um, what we call the cultural room, which is like Japanese farming, um, the ranchos, and also the Vanderlips. And then as you go through, it kind of talks about the gray whale. That's a big feature here for us because obviously the gray whale migration is going on December to May. So that's one of the biggest attractions for our visitors. They love to come and ask and come and watch, watch the whales. So we loan out binoculars here for people if you just exchange it for uh, car keys or driver's license. Um, so it's a really special experience. Yes, yeah, so we get a lot of compliments on our gift shop. It's um, really fun and we kind of, what we purchase is kind of relate, relevant to our museum here. It's really like sea themed and something they can really take away and kind of tie their experience to. So it's a great shop just to, even we have things from really nice gifts if you're looking for a, a, you know, a nice present for someone or just small takeaways for the kids. You know, you're here with the family, you don't want to spend a lot and you just want something for the kids to remember their experience. And then of course, um, one of the, the biggest things is all of this is free. Tell, talk about that. Yeah, so we're open every day. We only close four days out of the year. So the days we are closed, it's uh, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and uh, January 1st. So every day, 10 to 5, you can come on down. We only accept donations. So if you feel free, just drop it in our little box. But, you know, it's here to share with the whole family and the whole community. All right, Liz, you know, it is so important that people keep their homes safe, keep their families safe. And you and I have both been victims of somebody breaking into our homes. And really, you need all the safety uh, help that you can get. Let's talk about the Ring Doorbell because I know that you had a chance to do a story on that and tell us more about it. Okay, so I think the community too is hearing a lot more about what's called Ring Video Doorbells. Right. Um, you can go into ring.com. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Lomita Sheriff's Department have partnered up with ring.com, the company, to um, have residents purchase these at discounted rates. In fact, the city just had a event where I was talking to um, the person that organized it for the city, Jackie Ruiz, she said there was more than 100 people that showed up to purchase these products mm -hmm. using a discount code from the city. And we'll tell you later on about how you can get that code and you can purchase these all through the month of April with the help of the city subsidy. Super important for public safety. Why what Huge. these doorbells will do, which we're mm -hmm. going to show you the viewers, um, is they basically allow you to Put a, what looks like a doorbell that will be motion activated. With you, a video camera, with a video is that right? Camera. Okay. It's a surveillance camera. And it gives you that layer to protect your That's home. That's right. So that video gets recorded. And so you can see who's coming to your door. Often, hopefully, it's the it's the mailman or somebody dropping something off, a wanted visitor. That's but right. But for the unwanted visitors. I think it deters them because they see that and think, oh, I don't want to stop at this house because they've got surveillance. Right. And, and the video, um, these video surveillance cameras um, that look like doorbells will mm -hmm. capture um, who's coming to your door, and then you have that, and your phone gets a message that, you know, this doorbell has been activated. It's great. You can communicate. It has a lot of cool um, options that you can do with it. So we're going to now, we're going to talk to a detective with the Lameda Sheriff's Department we're going to meet up with, a resident that has just installed one, and of course the city um, leader who's helping to uh, put this program out there right now. Let's hear what they have to say about how Ring can help keep your home safe. We're offering a final round for RPV residents and it's the last call so we want to make sure RPV residents come take advantage of this special offer. The city negotiated with Ring.com special prices. The best bang for the buck is the Video Doorbell Pro at $75 because the city's $50 one-time incentive applies and Ring's $50 discount applies. And that's um, eligible for each RPV, RPV household. It's one per household. And it's a great added um, security value to each home. And we want to make sure residents have a sense of security um, and are able to take advantage of it. Friends of mine had Ring installed at their home. And then the city of Rancho Palos Verdes had a promotional program. And I decided to take advantage of it. And I am so happy that I did it because I'm connected to my neighbors and I feel that it's protecting the exterior of my home. I was burglarized. Uh, I didn't have ring. Uh, they, there was a rash of burglaries in the neighborhood and there was a f sort of a format that they were using. They were smashing the glass part of my French doors and they would 
come in and while the alarm was sounding, they would just do a quick ransack and they'd be out the door before any, any police showed up. Talk about what Ring, why Ring is important, you think, as a, as a public safety tool. Uh, there's several reasons why. You have, your first reason is um, you actually get a, a live feed of what's going on in your home. Um, they have ring.com, uh, what are they, doorbells, um, but they also have uh, cameras that you can put outside and inside your home. So once, once any movement is detected, uh, you get an alert instantly to your phone, and then you can alert us saying, hey, this person doesn't belong in my house, and we'll be able to respond pretty quick. So what happens is if somebody comes to the door close to it, there's like a motion sensor. And then also if they ring the doorbell, there's a video of the person coming to the door. And I can respond through there. my Hello. phone on an app in my phone. I can speak to them and ask them what they want, but they don't know that I'm not home. Over 1,000 residents have purchased a product through the incentive program. Overwhelmingly, the, po the response was really positive. Residents have been really pleased with the product. And we've had several success stories where videos from residents' rings devices have been a tool in crime solving for the sheriff's department. So it's been really great. It's, it, it makes a huge difference because uh, burglaries, if we don't have anything, it's like chasing a ghost. Now we actually have an image of somebody, uh, an image of a car, um, it's, it gives us a lot more to work with than absolutely nothing. Just came back this morning from a case uh, where uh, three individuals broke into a home. Uh, the daughter was away, wasn't even home, um, saw it on her, she got the alert on her phone, she called her father, in turn they called us. We were able to respond there within four or five minutes. We ended up only catching one because he was the lookout and he was able to alert the other three. The Rings app is free and it's not limited to only customers that have a Ring device. Anyone can download Ring's app, and we're really encouraging residents to consider doing so. It's a really great app that allows neighbors to share real-time public safety information. We share our little video clips among our neighbors because I'm part of the Neighborhood Watch program, so if there's something suspicious happening, people will send me an alert and say, someone just came to my door and, and stole a package. And I'll actually be able to see it because they forwarded the, the, the little video clip. After I've been burglarized, I just really want to minimize any type of home invasions again, because I just, you know, you lose everything. Liz, you know, it's really so amazing how technology has advanced over the years. Now, do you have a ring doorbell yet? I obviously after doing this story, I'm definitely going to install one. I'm an RPV resident, so I'm going to take advantage of getting a discount code. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, stay tuned because on our next program, you're going to see me and my husband install. Is this going to be a comedy or? Uh, well, it's, <laughs> even though you know you don't have to attach the Ring uh, video doorbell to your actual doorbell, but you but can. But there's an app, is that right? Yep. yep. Well, there's two things. You can you can go on a Ring.com to find out how to install these, and also. Um, people can get a free app that you can download onto your phone and what okay. that allows you to do is people that get videos that might show an unwanted visitor on their device, they put it out on the app and then you can see like, oh, in this neighborhood, this suspicious character. That's great. In fact, there was a video just recently of a white male that was showing up dressed like a city hall employee, imposing himself as a city hall employee, saying he was going to check people's gutters and that's been put out on social media. So people should be seeing that. We have it right now on the screen, too, for people to take it, a look. You know, it's it's amazing how bold people are to try to break into your home by, by impersonating people like that. It's right. terrible. I know. Law enforcement is, you know, concerned. And, you know, right. one home invasion is one too many. This That's certainly right. can help to protect and secure your home. Again, you want to email Jackie Ruiz, which is J-R-U-I-Z, yes. at rpvca.gov to get that city discount code for RPV residents and go ahead and purchase a product. Um, there's numerous products that have up to $100 in savings. That's great. So, um, and it's all about you know communicating and helping to keep our community safer. That's right. And speaking of safer and sharing information, we want to let you know about a big road closure. Um, starting today, March 26th through April 13th, there's going to be road work actually on PV Drive East between Cali Aventura and Crest Road East. So, 
give yourself a little bit more time uh, to get through that. And if residents have any questions, they can call City Hall at the Public Works Department at 310-544-5252 for more information. Okay, more information from the City's Public Works Department. Two dates to mark down for residents, um, and that is the RPV Public Works Department is announcing that on Saturday, April 21st, is the city's free document shredding and e-waste roundup event for RPV residents only on that date, April 21st, from 8 to 11 a.m. right here at City Hall. Now, residents can bring Maria three storage size boxes of material to shred right there on site. So and it's tax time, so yes. everybody has lots of things to shred. Yep. And you can also bring your electronic waste. Um, also, they're going to be giving free mulch away um, that day, and that's up to three cans per household, so that's super that's great. great. People are gardening now with spring, so that mulch comes in handy. Sure. And there's also um, the other last date we want to give out, important, is Saturday, April 28th from 9 to 3. And this is for all L.A. County residents. The other date was for RPV. Just for RPV, only. right. But anyone can come to this, and it's, again, to bring unwanted household hazardous waste like, you know, paints, batteries, yes. um, old, you know, expired medications, electronic waste like computers, old TVs, um, and your DVD players, for example, right here to City Hall. That's right, Liz. It's baseball season pretty yes. much everywhere. Yes, spring is in the air. Baseball right. time, Marie. I know she's been singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. <laughs> I you have. have been very excited for this to be happening. You just took your trip to Arizona for spring training. I and did. You are back on the field with your teams, whether Dodger Stadium or right here at Penn and PV High. Or Angel Stadium in Anaheim. You are swinging in action. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> because the Dodgers were in the World Series last year, I'm not over that yet. I mean, I feel like we we're just there, and now we're back at baseball again. Time to wear your Crazy. blue. And I'm going to tell you something. Here on the hill at PV High and Peninsula High, these players are so serious about baseball. A lot of the coaches have played uh, in the major leagues, and these guys are really dedicated. It's really it's interesting. A lot of talent here on the hill, that's for sure. And I had a chance to catch up with uh, Derek Duarte, who is the co coach over at Peninsula, and here's what he had to say about the upcoming season. We've improved in all areas. Um, pitching's, you know, really good. We, we throw lots of strikes and multiple pitches um, in any count. Uh, our backbone is our, is our defense and pitching, and so we, we do really well and excel in that area. We just, uh, as long as we can score some runs, um, we're going to do a good job of keeping them off the board. How many returning players do you have? We have 14 seniors. That's, that's pretty good to have that many seniors on a team like this. What are your expectations for this year? Um, I expect to make playoffs. Um, I expect to do well in league, and, and I think that we can beat and compete with anybody on the field. Um, I want to get into playoffs and I want to make a run at it. Um, once we get there, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a new season. Everybody comes back to a 0-0 zero, zero record and, you know, if we could peak at that time, we're going to be really good. What is it that, that they sort of experience during the regular season that gets you to that next level, like you said, when you get to playoffs and then you sort of excel there? Well, we play in a really powerful league. You know, our league is tough. Um, Maricosta's, you know, they're, they're the team to beat this year and Redondo is always good and it's always tough to play the team on the other side of the hill you know like that's always going to be an emotional um, game for these guys and so you know that really helps us um, along with our tournaments we play we play in a, a three really good tournaments we have the El Segundo tournament that we start off with um, Redondo kind of uh, that tournament evolves over the, the year it, it takes its course every weekend you know for all the way through May and then um, we play in a tournament called the Anaheim Lions Tournament. And then we get to play some schools from Orange County and, and some of those other schools out that we don't normally come across being over here in the South Bay. So it's nice to go play those schools and, and, and you know, test our, our skills against some of the better D1, D2 um, level schools. Um, and it really helps us once we get to that point. A lot of these guys, I remember from last year talking to them, they play all year in different leagues. How much do you think that helps them? I mean, they're seems like they're ready to go when they get here. Uh, it, it's almost a necessity nowadays. Um, with travel ball, it allows them to get the reps, the game reps that they may not get in a, in a high school season. You know, we have a lot of guys and we don't have as many games and we don't have the luxury of, of the freedom to move people in and out like you can in travel ball. There's certain 
there's different rules to allow people to get more reps and um, it's really important for their development to be able to do so and so it's it's a huge advantage for them to be able to do it as long as they're smart especially the pitchers um, in taking some time off of of, of the mound um, so that they can give their arms a little bit of a rest active rest you know so that they're still playing catch but maybe just take a break from the mound for about a month uh, or two would be would ideal it doesn't have to be consecutive but um, just that amount of time in total is it, is it difficult for them to do that it is it is because you know especially when they come to school they want to show like what they can do and so I'm trying to kind of make them you know take it easy you know don't come don't come out here you don't have to go full bore in October and I need you to be ready to go, you know, March, April, May, and really in June, you know, that's when we that's when we get rolling for playoffs and that's when we're going to really want to be at our best. And Liz, on our next show, of course, we're going to have all the Peninsula Panther baseball players on that show. And, you know, a big thank you to the student athletes and the coaches, the parents who watch the shows. We really appreciate it. We do appreciate our we viewers. Really and guess what? We have another new show here on RPV TV. That's right. For all of our viewers to watch. The program is called Lectures with Leanne. And it's uh, where we're going to be showcasing a monthly lecture with Leanne Lorraine. A lot of people know her in the community. She yes. does the Peninsula Seniors Community Calendar here already on she TV. She does, yes. And she basically is going to showcase one of the free, every Wednesday there's a free lecture. You are going to be hosting your own show. Uh, talk about that show. We're excited to have you. Oh, well, thank you, Liz. I appreciate that very much. Um, my show is called Lectures with Leanne, and we're just going to drop in on some of our really interesting, fabulous speakers that we have. And I would say to you, there are lots of interesting stories, and oftentimes they are unfortunately overlooked, but they're so worth telling. Right, there's nothing like oral history. That's true, and it's really wonderful from my perspective, from a historical perspective, to see this captured on film so that it can be archived and that future generations will be able to see it. There is no history that's as important as the people who actually lived it. So Peninsula Seniors has a history, my understanding it's about 30 years, of weekly lectures, um, always here at Fred Hess Community Park at 10.30 a.m., and so I have been producing the lectures for five years and I'm actually starting my sixth year this year. We've had some of the most amazing people. We have had Gwen Shotwell, the president of SpaceX. We've had uh, Bob Eckert, the retired chairman and CEO of Mattel. We've had Steve O'Dell, author of The Black Dahlia Murders. We have had the most fascinating people and continue to try to find more fascinating people. Well, I keep coming because Leanne, who runs the program, picks out outstanding programs. So it's a pleasure to come every single week. And now these are going to be shown on RPV TV. I'm sure you're happy to hear that. That is exciting because let's say it does happen one Wednesday that I can't get here. I can watch it on TV. I don't know if you heard, but it's the, the Easter season. It is. One of the traditions, which we have almost every holiday, is a Greek dish okay. called spanakopita, uh, uh, spinaki in Greek is spinach, and pita is pie, right? pitas. Yes. And I think I told you, my sister, who's visiting from Boston, came to town. She roped her in on this, I did. tell you. And so it's my sister, sister Pamela, she loves to cook, and she's known for making the Greek spinach pie. Oh, good. So I talked her into making a pan to showcase right here on our PV TV. So let's join her in my kitchen now as she's gonna show all of us how to make Greek spinach pie known as, you can say it. No, you say it. Spanakopita. <laughs> Thanks, Sister Liz and Maria. Happy to be here and happy spring to all. I'm here to show you a recipe called Spanakopita. It's a recipe that we've used for many years, but especially over the holidays. So let's get going and so that we can get cooking, let me show you the basic ingredients. Scullions, curly parsley, 30 ounces of frozen spinach, seven large eggs, a pound and a half of feta cheese, 16 ounces of cottage cheese, two sticks of butter, and a box of phyllo dough. Once you've assembled your ingredients and you are starting to make it, there's a couple things you need to do in advance. And that would be one, to thaw your phyllo dough. 
because it is frozen. It takes two to three hours to get this to room temperature. The other thing is your spinach. Your spinach is frozen and chopped, and you also have to thaw that and then squeeze all the extra water out of it. While my phyllo and my spinach is thawing, I then chop my parsley and my scallions. I have just chopped them into little pieces, and it's just about a cup. So now we're putting our scallions and our parsley into our olive oil and butter, and we're just gonna saute it so that it gives a little bit of extra flavor for your pie. Now the fun begins. I'm gonna start to mix the filling for the spuddy copita. First, I'm gonna put in the scallions and the parsley. The next thing I'm gonna add is the cottage cheese. It's a full 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. You're gonna put that in and then you're gonna take it and you're gonna start to mix these first two things together. It's kind of like mix and add, mix and add. This is the easy part of mixing because the next thing that's coming, the big kahuna, the feta cheese. It is one and a half pounds of feta cheese that goes into this. Once you've crumbled it, you're then gonna mix that. Next, we're gonna add the seven eggs and this will make the mixing a little easier. Before I had added those eggs, I did mix them and I also added a half a teaspoon of black pepper and one teaspoon of salt. The final ingredient we add is the 30 ounces of thawed, mm. squeezed out spinach. And then we will mix that in as well. Now we're gonna start to assemble the spunny copeter and I'm gonna start by buttering the pan. Working with phyllo can be a little scary and intimidating, but it's really not. Lift that first sheet of phyllo, and you're just gonna bring it right over and rest it in the bottom of your pan. You're gonna take your butter, and you're gonna paint it. Buttering the 10 sheets of phyllo will take about five to 10 minutes. Now that I've buttered, the bottom half of phyllo, I'm now gonna add the mixture on top. Once you put the mixture on top, you will then spread it evenly over the phyllo. Once your mixture is spread, you will then butter and layer the other half of the phyllo box. As I finish layering the last layers of the phyllo on top, we then will measure and cut this pie before we bake it. The phyllo dough I used was 14 by 20. So I'm taking out my tape measure and I'm gonna make two inch squares because that's a good appetizer size. The oven has been preheated to 375. We're gonna put it in for 50 to 60 minutes and oppa, as the Greeks say, we're gonna enjoy it. And here we have it, the spunny kopita cooked and now it's time to serve it up and don't worry Liz and Maria I've left plenty for you you can eat it at any temperature but I'm gonna eat it hot off the press as I say in Greek yasu all right that looks fantastic where is my spanakopita well you know I didn't bring you a piece but I did bring you the recipe gee thanks Liz so now you get to go home and make it and I'm for all our viewers that might want to try this um, you can email me here at the city at lizb at rpvca.gov and I will send you that delicious bunny cup of recipe. And I love it because, you know, you can make it and bake it or make it and freeze it. It's great to have all around. And so I guess I'm going to go home now and make it since I don't have any here. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> Enjoy. I Thanks, know you love Liz. to cook. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. It's fun it. cooking here with you right now. It was. <laughs> Liz, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, well the day. Get we'll the date out. April 14th. That's we'll see right. you there at PVIC. That's right. Thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you next time.